Welcome to the official Autodesk Inventor podcast. My name is Garen Gardner. I'm an Inventor product manager, and this is episode number 39. So it's been a month or so since we've had a podcast out. Many of you, I've actually received several emails wondering if I'm still doing it. I am. Uh, the last month and a half, I've been uh, on holiday and between AU. It's been a little chaotic, but hopefully I'm back to a regular schedule. This particular episode, you know, a lot of episodes we talk about modeling, assemblies, um, you know, different things in the, the modeling environment. But this, this episode, I want to spend some time actually in the drawing environment. That's where many of you spend your time. And um, this episode will be hopefully beneficial for those of you who've used Inventor for quite a while. But I think it's more uh, in line with, you know, if you're just coming up to speed or you've, you haven't used Inventor for, a, you know, for too long, there's some, some tips that can help you get rolling. So with that, I'm going to go over to a drawing. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that I have a 3D model. This is a, a one of the sample inventor models. I've made a couple of slight modifications, and then I've created a drawing. In this drawing view, I've just got the three views, and I've made a, a couple of modifications to the layers. I've added a, a couple of colors in the layers just to add clarity. But the first thing that we want to do is I'm going to start off by adding some center lines. And, you know, Inventor has the way if you go into the annotation area, uh, you can come in and place center lines. But, you, you know, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's per hole. But if you want to automate this a little bit, you'll notice you can go to a drawing view. You can tell it to, to create your center lines. You can tell it the type of geometry to place it on. I'm going to use default settings, hit OK. If I zoom in, you'll notice that I have center lines here. Now, if I want to do it on a side view, I can also do much the same thing. We'll tell it that we want those center lines, and I'm going to tell it that we want side views, the, the side view center line. You'll notice that it places a center line. Now, the center line sizes are all managed through the style library or the, the style editor. So you can actually go in and tell it to offset the, the uh, center lines out a little bit or, or to, to be a little bit larger if you want, and they'll associatively update if you go in and make those changes. So with that, we also want to be able to retrieve some dimensions. So in my 3D model, I've, I've placed a bunch of dimensions to create this. And you know, manually, manually, I can come in and add additional dimensions now that I've created my drawing views and place a couple of, of dimensions in here as far as how big the holes are, their location, things like that. But I can also come in and tell it that we want to retrieve any of those model dimensions. So you'll notice by right-clicking, I can tell it to get model annotations or retrieve dimension, sorry. And I can select e either the entire part, which will get the dimensions from everything, or I can do it per feature. So I can say, you know, I just want a couple of feature dimensions. So let's let's actually cancel out of that. We'll do it by feature. Select a couple of these features and you'll notice that it adds them. Or in this case, we'll do the entire part. That's fine. And then once it's displayed those, I may want to tell it which ones we really want to grab. And I can grab all of them or just a handful of them. We'll grab them all. And then, you know, we, we could also do something if we want to arrange these differently. I can tell it to get all the model dimensions, and I'm just going to tell it to arrange those dimensions. And based on whatever style I'm using, it'll use that style information and arrange them accordingly. Now, I also may want to move some of these dimensions around. You'll notice that I have a 1.75 dimension. This came from the model but I want to move it over to a different view. So in this case, we may want to, we just right click on it, we'll tell it that we want to move the dimension to a different view, and now you'll notice that, let's uh, zoom in a little bit, and we'll align that dimension a little differently, but we've now moved the dimension from one view to another. So we can recover the dimensions, we can move the dimensions around, but we can also, since they came from the actual model, you'll notice that if I right click on it, we can tell it we want to edit the model dimension. And this allows us to, just as, we, just as if we were at the 3D model, I can come in and say, let's do two inches. And you'll notice that it's going to update all the, the views. So now it, it actually, if I go back to the 3D model, you'll notice it's been updated also. Now this isn't always a good idea. Uh, if you're doing single part files, this is, this is a great thing. You can do it in the, in the drawing environment. If you're working in an assembly or a part that's being referenced in an assembly, you may want to just go back to the 3D model and make the change, but there are times when this is useful. Um, there are some organizations that will lock this functionality down, so when you install, you actually have the option to turn this on or off. It's on by default. If you, if you don't have this available, um, it's been disabled when somebody's installed Inventor on your machine. 
All right, a couple of other things that we can do. So we've moved the dimensions, we've edited the dimensions, uh, made the, the model bigger or smaller based on that. But what if we also wanted to add some text in here that had parametric information? So you'll notice that I can go into my text editor and we can say that from, you know, in this particular case we're only working with a single part file. So I only see that one component. If this were a subassembly, I would have all the different components I could choose from. I have model parameters or user parameters. So under model you'll notice I have all the D0, D1. I've renamed a couple. Underneath user parameters you'll notice that if I've created any user parameters they're available as well. So I'm going to take this length dimension, change the precision to be two decimal places, and insert it into my, my format text. Now I'm going to go to my model dimension and use, we want to insert width, but I'll probably do something like I'll, I'll use inch and then we'll do by width with the same precision and we'll also type in inch. So with this we can see that we've formatted it how I've wanted, I've added some additional text and the, the great thing about that, in fact it's a little small, let's just bump that up to be a little larger text. We'll move it up. So now if we go back into this dimension and we'll modify it again, we'll edit that model dimension and we'll change it from 2 inches to 1.75, that's what it originally was. We notice that it updates the model size, it also updates this text. Now the way that we've set up the text and everything, I could go back to the model, make that 1.75 change in the 3D model, and, this, and, and it'll update the drawing view, update this text as well, the same thing. So I'm just making it easier for myself to modify it in the drawing. So this is a great way to be able to leverage parameters and information from your 3D model and have it associative to your 2D drawing. Now what if you wanted to do some other things, like what if we wanted to have a, a leader with information like this? You'll notice if you go into your leader dialog, you have much the same setup that I could come in and do the same exact thing. We'll say that uh, we're going to use user parameters, length, we'll insert that. You have to remember to, to use this D0, this is the, the add parameter. If you just select all of these things and then hit OK, it's not actually inserting it in. So just make sure that once you get the, the values that you want, that you change the precision and then insert it into your view. We'll hit OK. So now you have the exact same thing. And again, one last time, we'll come in and say, let's edit this. We'll say that um, we're going to change it back to something like 2.25. We notice that it changes here. The model has been updated. The dimension over here has changed. And this text has changed. So it's just a great way to link this stuff together. It's associative. So if you change it in one area, it's updated everywhere. Now finally, what we'll, cover, what, what we'll talk about is what about doing balloons? What if I want to be able to have something like the mass for uh, in a balloon? So instead of having the balloon with the item number, we may want to show the mass or the material or something else. So one of the things that you can do is we'll place a balloon and I'm just going to use my regular balloon command. We'll place it over here and it's using the regular, you know, just the, the, the default style for that particular balloon. Now I've created a new style. You'll notice that I can come over here, hit the drop down, and perhaps I didn't save it in here, which is just fine. We want to create a, a new one anyway. So let's go over to our style editor, and we can see exactly how to create a new style here. We'll give it just a second to launch the editor, and I'm going to go into my balloon area. You'll notice that usually I filter out to local styles. You can do all styles. You can do active standards. I like to do local. That just means anything that I've used that's in this document is in my local. And I'm going to create a new style. So I'm just going to come over here to the ANSI. We'll do a new style and I'm going to name it mass. Since that's what I want to show as mass properties. So now if I come in here you'll notice that I have different options for my balloon. This is the shape, what it's going to look like. And I want it to be in a circle.